What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little passes at this is dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. Uh, this is not the same episode as last week. We filmed two episodes in a row with these outfits on. I'm That's Chelsea. Right. And I'm James. And we're married and we like to get scared together and play games. Yeah. And this time, I'm running the game. Yeah. Chelsea's playing I'm the game. I'm playing. It's our last episode of the year, so I just get to chill and it's play our milestone game. episode of 201 201 yeah the one everyone strives to have yep and so i told i told my lovely wife i said hun don't worry about this next episode i'll take care of it you just you just sit there and look pretty and guess some <laughs> movies all right all right how's it feel to be running a game you know uh fine because i didn't put any effort into it this <laughs> is not this is not a horror survivor this is not an assembled collection of kills that you have to guess this is me uh i'm gonna summarize the thing i'm gonna talk about by reading the wikipedia article oh boy and okay. then i have a list of the movies that i'm gonna make you guess okay and that's yeah, so it explain what we're doing. Exactly. So this year, I got really into box office stats. It's stats, it's movies, it's things I love. Also, this year, fucking wild year to get in on box office stuff. To follow the box office, uh, one of the most surprising years in box office history. You know, there was a long run where you could count on superhero movies, especially Marvel films, just cleaning up at the box office. They had uh, Disney between Marvel and their animated features just had a lot of billion dollar hits. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, 2017 to 2019, maybe peak box office years that we may never get back to, unfortunately. Like in general? Just in general. I mean, of course, inflation plays a part. All of the these box pandemic didn't help. Yeah, all of these box office figures, they're never adjusted for inflation. And you may think that that's weird because obviously dollars from way back when are not worth the same as dollars now. But the, I think the reasoning I've seen where we don't adjust for inflation is because inflation is kind of balanced out by the change in behaviors and the market. Because back in the 50s, when the dollar was worth a lot less, it was the only game in town. You go to the movies because there's not other things happening. There's fewer shows on TV. Video games aren't a thing. Internet's not a thing. So as those other forms of entertainment are introduced, the market's shrinking just naturally as people are finding other things to do. So that's kind of the balance. You know, you can always say, yeah, Gone with the Wind is the highest grossing movie adjusted for inflation. But when Gone with the Wind came out, what the fuck else were you going to do? You know? So... You, you compare the movies against the other movies that came out in the same environment that they exist in. Okay. And so it's not a perfect thing, but you can't always be adjusting for inflation or else you're just always going to have these old-ass movies dominating the records, which they will dominate those records adjusted for inflation. But it's much more exciting when you have new records set every once in a while. Right. So what's the, currently the highest grossing film of all time? Oh, you know this. Titanic? No, that was for a long time. Is it? Is it a Marvel movie? Uh, it was briefly, but then it was superseded by a re-release of <laughs> Who Don't Fail, Hun? What? Who Don't Fail? <laughs> Who Don't You Bet Against at the box office? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> King Jimmy. <laughs> Oh, dude, fucking Avatar. Fucking Avatar. Oh, my God. How could I not? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you don't bet against King Jimmy. You don't bet against King you Jimmy, never man. never bet against James no, Cameron. <laughs> no, Endgame did briefly pass Avatar. It's so funny what a bunch of closet freaks everyone is for Avatar. We all pretend <laughs> no like we don't. cultural relevance. Yeah, we all pretend we don't love it and that it's not relevant and that it makes so much money. It so does. we're all just secretly 
We fucking love those blue people. Yeah, I mean, we do. I love those movies. I fucking I love those movies, man. I ironically love both of those movies. It, I think we, they're really good. We sadly never got a chance to see uh, Avatar 2 again in theaters. We saw it. We saw it once in once 3D in theaters. IMAX and I wept. It if, was so Yeah, good. I fucking cried. If they re-release <laughs> like, that, I, did cry. I will absolutely go see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think it goes Avatar, Endgame, titanic maybe or is it uh avatar 2 avatar 2 shot right the fuck up there uh god the page on highest grossing films is just this this mess because it's got all these uh because it's got lists for inflation it's got explanations and everything i just wanted to see a quick little i know the highest grossing animated film is that fucking lion king remake which is disgusting. It is, yes, yes. Uh, I still haven't watched that. Uh, yeah, I've never seen it, but it's uh, the highest grossing animated film uh, past a billion. There have been about 50, about 50 movies that have made a billion dollars, uh, which had, was so unheard of before, mm-hmm. but uh, now is, is just, and that's the thing, from 2017 to 2019, it was like, is this the new standard? But then COVID hit, right. really fucked up the box office and people's habits of going to theaters, mm-hmm. and things haven't really recovered since. Yes, Avatar, lifetime gross, $2.9 billion. Wow. A- Avengers Endgame, just under $2.8 billion. Which is... Is the original Avatar is yes. the highest grossing? And then Avatar 2, number three, wow. baby, 2.3 billion. So we, we all just, we all love it. We love those blue people. We and love then it. <laughs> Titanic is number four. So James Cameron has wow. three of the top five spots at 2.2 billion. Can you guess what rounds out the top five? No. Uh, is it another Marvel movie? No. Infinity War is number six. So what passed Infinity War? It had. Maybe the biggest opening. It had one of the most impressive legs. Is it? It's not other James Cameron, is it? No, but it's a big franchise film. Big franchise. Is it a Batman? No, Batman is also Batman and Spider Man. You don't bet against, but it's not a Batman. It's is it a Spider Man? No, No Way Home is number seven at one. Is it a superhero movie? It is not. Is it a Disney movie? They technically release this yes yes oh it is a division of disney oh i see so it's not an animated it's not like in the animated disney canon no is it pixar nope That'd be we weird. saw it in theaters opening fucking day baby i wept i cried in oh, the theater the new the new star wars force awakens, force awakens. Yeah. yeah made over two billion. Oh man if only we knew how stupid that was all gonna get <laughs> i know we didn't know any better i know yeah, so that top 10, it's got uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> Fucking Jurassic World hanging out in there. Wow. Yeah, Lion King, like you said, and then the original Avengers. That's the that's that top 10. So uh, this year was crazy because Marvel movies were no longer a safe bet. They kept failing. Superhero movies in general kept flopping and flopping. We all made fun of Black Adam when it came out because it didn't do a lot. And and The Rock had said, the, what is it? The the power dynamics are about to change or something like that. Uh-huh. And then it came out and people were like, ha, ah, it didn't make a lot of money. In retrospect, Black Adam did fine. Mm. Like when it came out, people said it bombed. In retrospect, based on all the especially DC releases that came afterward, it did fine. And probably because of The Rock. So like people were making fun of The Rock when it came out. But actually, he probably saved that movie and made it somewhat successful. The biggest surprises, of course, were Barbie and Oppenheimer. Just Mm -hmm. clean in house. Barbie becoming the highest grossing film of the year, passing the juggernaut that was the Super Mario Brothers movie. Mm. Uh, That's number two. Oppenheimer's just under a billion right now. I I think that's why they re-released it. They're going to get a re-release. They're going to pass a billion. It's going to be great. Good for them. It re-releases early January, right? I mean, I want to go see that shit again. It's also finally getting... That's probably still my number one for this year. Oh, nice. I I love Oppenheimer. I think it's my number two. Yeah. But it's it's contends for number one for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, Oppenheimer, it also is finally getting its Japanese release, which Mm -hmm. that was in dispute for a long time. Um. And it will join. They're like, please, Japan. We need to make a billion dollars. <laughs> like, please, we're it's, begging you. We we promise it's not uh, saying it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we promise. We promise. Depiction is not endorsement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Retweets do not mean endorsement. <laughs> uh, it will join a very uh, small list of R-rated movies that will make a billion dollars. Wow. I think one of the Deadpool's is the only other one, maybe. 
Uh, it, it's hard for an R-rated movie to make a billion. Mm-hmm. So that kind of leads us. In- yeah. So how does this this yes. relate to horror movies? Exactly. So that kind of leads us into horror movies. Horror movies are, as we are learning, pretty safe bet at the box office. They're not going to make a billion dollars. Okay. As much as we all love horror, they are still a niche genre. I don't know if I want to live in the world where horror is the Avengers of cinema, like where it's the big thing. Cause then it's not our little weird thing. I know. Do you know what I mean? And that's the fun part of horror is it's like you're, it's, it's the home for weirdos. That's, that's and to make a billion dollars, you've got to appeal Appeal to a lot of people. Yeah. That's right. Oh my God. There's glitter in my eye. Yeah. I put glitter on for this episode. Just just for this one, not for the last one. Oh so, yeah, for, well yeah, for both oh, okay. these that we filmed. I was like, oh, you went in between the episodes. Yeah, we for the and put for the gl- cinema score, gave any glitter. Yeah. <laughs> so thankfully, horror often doesn't cost that much to make. The problem that this year was running into was because Disney, uh, Disney was like, cool, all these movies are making a billion dollars, so we can spend two hundred and fifty million dollars to make them. Oops. Yo, if if you make a movie for two hundred fifty million dollars, you don't want it to make. $251 million. That's not a profit because uh, the, the general multiplier you're looking for to make a profit is 2.5. That is because studios split the money 50-50 in most cases. Disney had some weird deals going on for a while, but you split it 50-50 with the theaters. So if a movie makes a $100 million, the theaters get $50 million and the studio gets $50 million. Okay. So if you make a $100 million movie and it makes $100 million... In, in box office gross, the studio's only getting 50 of that. So you're at a loss. That extra 0.5 that they add on, that's for like marketing and stuff, which isn't included in the budget, which might seem weird, but the budget is how the movie got made. Yeah. And then the distributor decides how much to spend on marketing. So to make a profit, the general rule is that you want to make more than 2.5 times your budget. So when you have a movie that costs $250 million, that means you're going to have to make like 700 million dollars to make a profit and in 2017 to 2019 sure no problem nowadays when people are more reluctant to go to theaters in part because of the streaming environment out there especially with disney yeah where they conditioned people to expect it to be on disney plus pretty soon especially families with their animated films oh my god Mm -hmm. uh it's been harder to get people in the theaters and so they've had a lot of flops this year has seen some of the biggest flops of all time as judging by money lost indiana jones up Mm. there flash up there and i think marvels may have taken the title of like did wish flop really hard wish flopped really hard yeah yeah and uh it's and that's that's always surprising to me when animated movies flop that hard i guess you're right because of the streaming thing because children's movies are usually a pretty good bet mm -hmm. for a studio because it's like something you do with the family yeah and, it, that's how it used to be. Now, yeah. you, to take a family of four it's out to so the movie theater, yeah. that's expensive, man. Yeah. That's going to run you well over 100 with tickets and concessions. Yeah. So why not wait a couple of months, tell your kids, hey, that movie, it's not out yet, and just wait for it to come out on streaming yeah. and watch it at home. So it's it's a weird environment out there, and uh, these ballooning budgets have been a big problem for the, the, the big studios. And so we're definitely going to be seeing a correction coming soon. Uh, but horror often does not cost a lot to make. Mm-hmm. So it's a safe box office bet. But like we've discussed, it's not a very, uh, it's it's not mainstream. Right. It doesn't appeal to everyone. Yeah, can you guess what the highest grossing horror film of all time is? Of all time? Yes. Not, not adjusted. adjusted for inflation. No. So it is a more recent oh, one. Is it one of the It movies? It is. The first yeah, It. Yeah, it's got to, okay. Passed over. It's like, s- I know that first movie made a ton of money. And it made over $700 million wow. worldwide. That's crazy, actually. Yeah. that That is. Like, It was huge yeah. for horror. I, I often point to 2017 as when horror boomed. It's not because that's when the Kill Count started. It's because of It and it Get Out. It was just weird timing. That yeah. We got lucky with that timing. Was, yeah. Sixth Sense is second. Oh, interesting. Which made six hundred and seventy million. I I bet a big part of that is 
that movie was it kind of crossed over into the yeah it's a horror movie but it's also like a drama and it was maybe seen as a bit more respectable and there's the oh it's got a crazy twist and yeah. so you want to go see so how it ends it. yeah same thing with three and four they're not straight horror films really i am legend and world war z both very oh, actiony yeah. Uh, and then coming up at number five is It Chapter Two with four hundred and seventy million. Wow. Uh, Exorcist is right after that. The, the original, original Exorcist. Wow. Four hundred forty adjusted? unadjusted. Wow. Adjusted over a billion. Oh my god. Adjusted over a billion. Wow. Exorcist was a smash hit. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy considering how controversial it was. I but mean, that's probably why people want to go see it. Yeah. Yeah. So that brings us to cinema score. So there are plenty of ways to measure an audience's response to a movie. Uh, the one you most often hear about is probably Rotten Tomatoes, which is an accumulation of various critics. And then the score is not their average score. It is a percentage of which critics liked it, mm-hmm. which is often uh, that That confusing. always is, yeah, because there's so many reviews where it's like... It's fine. It's okay. So, like, do you... Is that a good review? That's a good review. A, yeah. If it's, I think it's like if it's six out of ten or higher, it counts as a good review. So a movie could have a hundred percent Rotten Tomato score, but and everyone thinks it's like just it's okay. Fine. Yeah. So don't get confused by that. When the movie has like a ninety percent, they're not saying this is a nine out of ten movie. It's just ninety percent of critics thought it was better. It was more good than bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we're not talking about Rotten Tomatoes. We're talking about CinemaScore today. Because CinemaScore is a market research firm based in Los An- Las Vegas. That is a direct quote from uh, Wikipedia. Please don't include us on the plagiarism YouTube channels. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this was a system developed in 1979. And oh, what it, is that old? It is. But I think uh, in recent years, it's maybe gotten more prominent. Because what it does is it surveys opening weekend crowds Mm -hmm. okay it finds audience members and it pulls them on the a movie's opening weekend it does it so in uh looks like 15 different cities they have uh cinema score representatives just like larger cities la san diego den but like also denver milwaukee so not just like big cosmopolitan yeah. places i've never seen a cinema score representative no do you know they, do, i don't even know if they exist but it's like it's like i've never been polled about the president but, yeah you know polling the the nature of polling if you take a statistics class you don't need a ton of people to be representative ideally there are always issues when it comes to that the polling methods but the thing with cinema score is it tends to be the one that most highly correlates with a movie's legs. And by legs, I mean its multiplier of how much it makes in the opening weekend as related to how much it'll make before it leaves theaters. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, <clears throat> a movie could have a huge opening weekend, and let's say it has a, it opens huge, but then word gets out that this movie fucking sucks, and its multiplier just drops, and it makes, in its entire run, just like, twice the amount it made in opening weekend. Okay. Not good. As opposed to Titanic, legendary legs. Scream, legendary legs. They come out, they may not have a big opening, but word of mouth gets Mm -hmm. out that they stay in theaters for so long and keep making money. I think Titanic came out in December, but its highest grossing weekend was Valentine's Day the next year. (laughs) So it had like months before its highest grossing week. So those legs were amazing. Cinema score is the highest correlating thing to how well those legs will be. So So it's the audience word of mouth. It kind of is, because the thing is that they're polling opening weekend audience members. So they are polling people who are there for a reason. They want to see this movie. Right. And so that kind of determines how that word of mouth will be established and get out. And because of that, it's a very strange scale. If you get a C cinema score, you're fucked. If you get a B cinema score, it's not good. Yeah, this is what this is the thing about cinema score that I hate. Yeah. Is that the letter grades are very misleading. Mm-hmm. It, it it makes It's kind of like IMDb ratings. Yeah, yeah. Where everything's a 6 point or 7 point something. Or like because the range of what is like this movie is going to have like this movie has positive audience reception is so small. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. That it's like, well, then why not? I feel like it's Spinal Tap. I'm like, why not just make 
it go up to 11 like yeah why not, why not just have it go yeah. up to 11 why yeah. not just recalibrate the it's stupid it's a little stupid but it does have pluses and minuses so eight pluses are very rare very rare yeah i think top gun maverick got an a plus wow okay i think beyonce's uh renaissance, oh, renaissance. got an a plus okay. and eras i think got an a plus because it is again but well, yeah, you think of like who's going to see those exactly. opening weekend. <laughs> so, but the, the the value in it is how well did this movie market its audience, mm -hmm. and how much did that audience respond to it? Mm -hmm. Like, was it marketed well, and mm -hmm. will those people champion that movie and help it leg out? But here's the thing with Cinema Score, and it's so funny if you look at uh, this is literally what they give you. Uh, when you are pulled with cinema score, it's like a little, it's a oh, little piece wow. of paper with perforated tabs and you just fold back what letter grade you want to give it. You also say your gender and age range. And then I think there are other options of like, why'd you see this? And it could be like the lead actor or the genre. Oh yeah. Reasons for attending actor in lead role, actress in lead role, type of movie, subject matter, director. There's also like, would you rent this on VHS or DVD? Or would you buy this on VHS? I have or DVD? a question. How are there plus and minuses if the grades on here are just A, B, C, D, F? From the average. So oh. if they take an average and it's like some, I don't know exactly how it works, the exact science, but they will get a plus or a minus somehow okay. from averaging things. Because it looks Cinema like the score audience. says there's only two genders. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know if they've, I don't know when this card is from and yeah. if they've changed anything. I'll, to, I'll put that picture up on the screen so people can yeah. see. So A plus films, like I said, uh, Steven Spielberg has two, Cameron mm -hmm. has two, Zemeckis has two. Wow. Okay. Uh, you what get Zemeckis's, uh, Zemeckis's career is 94 crazy. and 2004. What would those be? Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump is 94. Was then, 2004? Yeah. What was that? No, I know that's no all I can think of was, but there's no way Polar Express. Dude, what is if Polar a Express has a fucking cinema a plus. score? Because by 2004, Zemeckis is like starting to get into the weird zone. It's not available. Here's the thing, though. As we've been talking about horror, horror gets its own grit, its own Scale. spectrum of cinema score. Horror often just gets really low scores but that's so weird because it's it's yeah when you think about okay they're pulling people who are going opening weekend or night mm -hmm. so like i i would think horror fans are the ones going you would think that but horror fans can be really picky too so i don't know. sure maybe it's that maybe it's uh you know people who aren't horror fans are just seeing these movies and getting pulled for some reason but for whatever reason horror movies are constantly rated lower okay okay because according to the guy who made it a's generally are good b's are shaky c's are terrible d's and f's they shouldn't have made the movie this is a oh quote my God. or they promoted it wrong and the apps the wrong crowd came to see uh, it. okay okay it so it wasn't what they were expecting exactly yeah another guy at cinema score said that an f in a horror film is equivalent to a b minus in a comedy <laughs> so horror films have their own scale oh boy okay and because of that there have only been, can you guess how many horror I think films? You said like four or five. No, nine horror films okay. have reached the A range. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say like A plus. No, not a single horror film Is has an ever plus? gotten an A plus. Okay. No. So only nine have reached the A, a range. A or A minus. Yes. A or A minus. Okay. And what are what years am I thinking about here? Uh, I will, uh, let's start by saying it's from the eighties to present. So oh, big man. range. This is so going to be so Ken hard Chelsea, because it's not just like what made the most. It's, it's, it's not like what's a good movie. It's what satisfied the audience most. Oh, fuck. I feel like I'm going to be really bad at this. Okay. I'll give you hints as you yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because I still questions. don't understand what, what do the people who, <laughs> fill these like what are they looking for mm -hmm. because even just the fact that horror has its own scale that puts me at a disadvantage i think because i clearly think differently than most of the people who are filling out these fucking cards yeah okay there's nine of them there are nine okay okay and we're talking like 80s through now yes technically 
is Get Out one of them. Get Out got an A minus. Okay. Look at that. Right off because the bat. Because I remember the word of mouth specific, like for that movie was fantastic. And that's, I remember that was a big reason. I was like, we, I want to go see it. Yeah. Because I'm hearing that it is really cool and good and. Yep. And we saw it in theaters and it was cool and good. Okay. Yeah. So. It, also a uh, shout out to Reddit user, my cat is sus. <laughs> for posting about this in the box office subreddit a month ago with this list. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> um, okay, so get out. It helps because I, I was around, you know, I was around for that movie. I remembered the kind of cultural discussion around the movie and the hype and the okay, so let so me So here, I'll I'll give you I'll give you a little you've unlocked a hint. On this list of nine, you've guessed get out. Yeah. There are six movies that came out before Get Out and two that came out after Get Out. Okay. Yeah. Is there a trend that on average cinema scores for more current movies tend to skew lower? There's not that trend. It, yeah. it, it, it It's not really a trend that affects okay. uh, based on modern films versus older ones. Okay. I will also say that one of these movies... Is it borderline horror? Yeah. Okay. Like, we've never discussed it on the channel. Oh, on the channel. On the channel. Not even in, like, a is this horror or not discussion? I don't think it was part of that discussion. Oh, that it's, one might. It's more of, like, an entry-level horror type thing. Hmm. I think it'd be safe to call it horror, but just it's more like a, a skews young. It's not Beetlejuice, is it? No. Okay. No. That'd be crazy if Beetle, everyone was like, this satisfying. <laughs> that, that was exactly I, I, what I was I looking knew, for. I knew what to expect going into Beetlejuice, and I got what I was expecting. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Ooh, so older. Okay, so most of them are older than Get Out. Yes. Interesting, interesting, yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Is The Sixth Sense on there? It is not, no. Okay. Interesting, because it grossed so much. Yeah. It's not, it's not a one-to-one. -one. It's just, it, it is the best indicator. Because like Rotten Tomatoes, a movie could have a great score, but could make shit at the box office. Is the weird borderline one before Get Out? Yes. Are there any animated movies on here? No. I, mean, I guess it's, there's not very many like animated horror movies. Yeah. Um. Okay. Hmm. All, like the older ones, have we covered all of them on the channel in some capacity? Have we covered any of them on the podcast? On the podcast, um, uh, at least one, and I don't remember if we covered another one. Okay, I don't think so. Um, if you okay, the if, oldest one was covered on the podcast. The oldest one was covered. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. It is it a zombie movie? The oldest one? It is not. Okay. Is it Psycho? No, nope. that's no. pre Cinema Score. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of Alfred Hitchcock caring about Cinema Score. <laughs> what did Rear Window get? <laughs> yeah. from you this mustn't audience? spoil the twist on your Cinema Score cards. <laughs> Hey, want to talk to you about our first sponsor this week, Rocket Money. All of us at one point or another have subscribed to something to get it for free for a few weeks. I've done it. You've done it. We're all guilty of wanting a free treat every once in a while. If you're like me, though, this attempt to get something for free often costs money in the end because you forget you subscribe to anything in the first place. We've all done it. This is a judgment-free zone. Our sponsor this week is here to help you with that. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Anytime I don't have to be on the phone with customer service is time I'm enjoying doing something more pleasurable, like getting my teeth pulled or doing taxes. Rocket Money will even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year. With over $500 million in canceled subscriptions, stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash deadmeat. That's rocketmoney.com slash deadmeat. Rocketmoney.com slash deadmeat. 
Our next sponsor this week is Nuts.com. It's the holiday season and that means treats. Fun fact, did you know calories consumed during the holiday season don't count? It's something scientists still have yet to find an explanation for. But seriously, it is nice to have a time of year where we're all expected to indulge, and I love traditional wintry snacks. It can be hard to find what I'm looking for at the grocery store. Candy canes are easy to find, and so are basic nuts like pecans, but what if you want more? I'm talking bourbon pecans, sweet and spicy pecans, pecan brittle, or butter toffee pecans. The variety is vast at nuts.com. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means there is something for everyone. Nuts.com offers plenty of gluten-free options, organic choices, and other diet-friendly products. Whether you're looking for something sweet, savory, or need to stock up on everyday cooking essentials, you're bound to find something to try. At Nuts.com, quality is a top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships, so they reach you deliciously fresh. Satisfaction is guaranteed. It's not really a holiday-type treat, but man, am I still thinking about their chocolate-covered gummy bears. I don't even really care for gummy bears on their own, but these chocolate-covered ones from Nuts.com are so fresh and they have such a nice texture. They feel like someone freshly made them yesterday. Right now, Nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at Nuts.com slash dead meat. So go check out all of the delicious options at Nuts.com slash dead meat. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's Nuts.com slash dead meat. Okay. While, while Chelsea guesses, I'll give a little fun fact. It looks like the first ever A plus film on Cinema Score was in fact E. T. the Extraterrestrial. Yeah, of course, because that by, is my personal favorite Spielberg. I think it's a fucking masterpiece. Followed by Gandhi. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, the last two A pluses were Eras and Renaissance. Wow. So, I mean, I guess concert it's movies. Those I mean, audience, it's the yeah. stands. And the one before that? Oh, the two before that: Sound of Freedom and Jesus Revolution. Mm. again the people going to see it yeah they're gonna love it they know i mean oh boy uh okay <laughs> if you were to let's let's i'm just thinking about the ones that are before get out okay uh and there's six of them if you were to suggest any of these six movies to me as like after we're done recording let's go watch one of these are there any of them that i would be like absolutely fuck yes like I was planning on doing some other stuff, but like I'd be so down to rewatch that. Maybe, maybe one, uh, maybe two. Okay. I would say at least one, if not two. Are any of them ones where you know that they, I, are, are they like beloved to, like, do I love any of these movies? I think you love one of these. Cause you know, I mean, most horror movies I love, but there's some horror movies that I love. And are any of them... I think I think one of them is nearing that territory, if not in it. Oh, this is so interesting. I'll also give you a random hint. It's not The the Exorcist? No. Uh, I will also give you a random hint that three of the films, I'm not saying they were all before Get Out, but three of them on this list are sequels. Wow. They are part twos. That actually does help a lot. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. The Conjuring 2? Yes. Really? That took, yes. And that's after. No, that's right before Is that Get right? Out. Be- okay, it's mm-hmm. right before. I mean, it's because Patrick Wilson sings in it. A plus <laughs> cinema score. A minus, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So it's, it's the one right before Get Out? Yes. The Conjuring 2? Mm-hmm. Conjuring 2 was two, 2016. Get Out was 2017. Okay. Weird. This list is going to be weird. <laughs> because, yeah, Conjuring 2 would not be on most people's like favorite horror movies list probably not you know so it's like yeah. i can't just think of like what are classic horror movies that people like yeah. like that's so fucking <laughs> i mean i guess if you're Although some of these yeah would be I mean, on those lists it's just yeah because i guess okay you're a fan of the warrens mm-hmm. and you go see that and like i mean i like i love the first conjuring and i like the second conjuring because it's, it's more of them being adorable <laughs> And like their love destroying demons and shit. It's great. Um, whitewashing that reputation. Yeah. Here's <laughs> it. You have to just, you have to just completely separate. I them. know. 
I know. There is like fictional Warrens and real Warrens. It is the difference between real Abraham Lincoln and Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter, whatever <laughs> that was called. Um, okay. <sighs> oh, the Irwin brothers, I think, make these Christian movies. Mm. Woodlawn? I can only imagine. That sounds Christian. These, these have A-plus cinema scores. American Underdog? And Jesus Revolution. Those are all yeah. A pluses, yeah. Um Okay. Are any of the other sequels post get out? One of them is. One of them is. Is it it part two? It is not. Okay. Cause that one That was divisive. That, that was no divisive, that yeah. Happen. Yeah. Is it is the sequel are these all second movies or are they, they movies are in a second. series? Yes. Okay, they're all second movies. This is so hard. Okay. Um The one, you said one of them we've covered on the podcast? Mm Mm-hmm. Pretty recently. Pretty recent. I was going to ask if it was like recent or. Well, Green Book got an A-plus cinema score. Is is the one we covered recently, is that post Get Out? No. No. Okay. Were we covering it because it was a new movie? No. Recent. What the fuck did we cover recently? I might need more hints because I feel like I'm grabbing from such a large pool and it's not just what are the best horror. It's it's like yeah. such a weird criteria. Okay. You've got one movie in the 80s. Okay. Two in the 90s. And then four in the 2010s, which includes Get Out. So okay. you need three more. I'm sorry, two more because that also includes The Conjuring 2. So, uh, yeah, no, no A's from horror movies in the two. 2000s. What about 2020s? There are two. So those are the two post. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, uh, okay. So there's two more from the 2010s. Uh, Yes. Correct. That I haven't guessed. Mm -hmm. Are any of these movies found footage? No. No. Okay. Are, are any of these movies creature movies? No. Oh my God. Is one of these strangers pray at night? <laughs> no. I could see that reasoning. Yeah. But no. I liked that movie. It was fun. Um, Can I... Is it cheating if I look at yeah. our... Po- it's cheating if I look at our podcast yeah. episodes? Come yeah, yeah. on. I don't remember what the fuck we've covered. I flush that shit right was- <laughs> out of my brain as soon as I'm done editing it. The podcast episode that we did recently covered the oldest of these movies. So it's like it's like a series. Wait. Oh, covered the Oh, I see what you mean. I thought you meant covered the first movie in like a franchise. Oh, no. But no. it covered the the oldest, the 80s one. Yes. Mhm. What have we just covered from the 80s? What the fuck have we just talked about from the fucking 80s? Dude, I don't remember. How recently? Like pretty recently. Like dude. last few months? Yeah. <laughs> Was it something where like I, had I seen this before? You had. Schindler's List, A+. Plus. I mean, who, <laughs> who is going to leave Schindler's List and be like, mm, mm. that would, that, like, you can't leave that movie and give it a B. Like, that would feel, that would be so, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Covered the one from the 80s. What the fuck have we talked about from the 80s? And it, is it good? Did we like it? Yeah. Did I have mixed feelings on it? A little, but you mostly liked it. I liked it a little more. Gressel, do you have any idea? I don't. I'm trying to remember. And I hate because I can't look at our list of episodes. Is yeah. this movie of boobs in it? This one, no. Okay. Uh, let's see. Which of these? I'm, okay, boobs? I really want to try and guess. I, can, I need to narrow. In. I don't think any of these have boobs. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I gotta really, I gotta hone in on this specific '80s one. You, that, that's the one you want to knock off. Yes. Yeah. Because okay. I think just trying to like guess all over, it's throwing me off, and I'm mm-hmm, getting confused. Mm-hmm, okay, so mm-hmm. this '80s movie. Yeah. We covered it recently, ish. I have a hint that would give it away. No, no, no! I'll, don't I'll do that. On, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it a slasher? No. Although there is a slasher on here. Just one. Uh, maybe two, but 
one like pure slasher, which is shocking. Is this Scream? No, I wish. Are there any Scream movies on this no. list? Okay. I honestly this the slasher that's on here is the most befuddling one. It is also a sequel and it is like like, like why I is personally this here? love this movie, but I am shocked to see it that's with so an funny. A okay. minus on cinema score. Is the eighties movie a sequel? No. Is the eighties movie is is the eighties movie considered a good horror movie? Yes. It's like like it is Many people love it. Many people love, love it. it. Yeah. I was more ambivalent, apparently. A little bit. This is not one of the ones where I would drop everything to rewatch. No. Probably not. No, no, no. Is it late eighties? Yes. Late eighties. Is this the gateway horror one? No. Oh wait, okay, no, because we would that's the gateway one is one that we like haven't covered. Correct. I'm very curious about that. I might tackle that one next. Okay. <laughs> Homeward Bound, A+. Plus. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, nice. shit. The Incredible <laughs> Journey. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah, that, that cinema score is weird. Because, like, okay, home, I mean, Homeward Bound's fine. <laughs> it's a good movie for kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who probably were most of that opening audience. Do kids fill these out? Or are they? Are, I don't know if it has to be 18 or older. Mm. That's a good question. Oh, what's that little card? Does it have a less than 18? Under 18 is, oh, okay. a, is a tab, yeah. Is the main character in this 80s film a guy? Yeah. Is it is it like a supernatural movie in any way? Yeah. It is. No way. I think I know. Gressel thinks shocked. he knows it. Oh, man. If I'm right, I will be shocked. Did, <laughs> so did we cover this like the last couple, like last couple months? Did I yeah. ask it already? Yeah. Is it themed to a holiday? No. The Blind Side, A+. Plus. <laughs> is the is there like a killer in this 80s movie? Uh, not I wouldn't say. Is I, it or is it like more of a force of nature kind of thing? I wouldn't say that either. You said there's it, there's not like a creature movie on this mm, list. No. Is it, so what the fuck? It's not like a it's not a, like a slasher. Is like there has to be a bad guy though. Sure, yeah. But is it more internal kind of stuff? No. It's not just it's so <sighs> Um is the lead in this movie someone who is famous for other stuff? Yeah. Like before this movie you one you, of the leads. So is it more of an ensemble? It's a little ensemble-ish. Dude, I'm I'm having a very hard time. I'm realizing how much harder it is to play this when I'm <laughs> filming a podcast. Yeah, right? And not, we're not just dicking around waiting in line for something and trying to keep ourselves entertained. <laughs> um, is there a love interest in this movie? Yep. Is it directed by like a horror icon? Is this directed by a master of horror? No. No. Okay. So it's not a Carpenter movie. It's not no. a Craven movie. Okay. Oh. It's very 80s. It's very 80s. Yeah. Just because you got a lot more to guess. So. I know. I, I'm i having a really hard time with it. Yeah. Um, I might need the hint that just gives it away. Uh, a character will be competing in the upcoming Horror Royal Rumble of 2023 or 2024. Ooh, so that's a little spoiler for all of you. It is, yeah. That's a, that's a double. Okay, I got to think back to all the characters that I've made. I'm a little surprised that at this point. It didn't jump out. No. Super 80s movie. Super 80s movie. Royal Rumble. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just trying to think of all the fucking characters I've made. Was it one you suggested? I forget. Recent podcast episode of a movie very beloved that you were uh, more positive than not, but a little. Can you give me another hint? Um... That was my giveaway hint. Oh, You've man. only made 13 was... of these wrestlers. I know, but they're all just such like a, a blur in my head. Um, we It's not Reanimator. No, we recently met the star, the the top line star of this film at a convention. <gasps> oh, fucking Lost Boys. Lost Boys, A minus oh. on Cinema Score. Okay. The Lost Boys. I was thinking maybe a bit more recent than when we talked about that. It's pretty recent. Yeah, I guess it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I see why. Yes, the idea. Okay, yeah, yeah. All of your answers are making more. Okay, Lost Boys. <laughs> the Lost Boys got an A minus. That's the oldest horror movie on this list. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. So you've got Lost Boys. Okay. Now got, I can stop thinking about that. You've got one. The Conjuring Two, and you've got Get Out. Okay. Let's talk about the weird one that's maybe not technically a horror movie. And okay. Get that done and out of the way. Mid 2010s. Mid 2010s. Yeah. You said there's no animated movies on this list? No. Is this a comedy? Uh, it's it's for kids. It's young adult. It's for kids. It, it's young adult. Is not it kids. Goosebumps? It is Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Okay. Yeah. Goosebumps 2015, the only horror movie with an A. Wow. Not an A minus. It is the only one with an so A. So is Goosebumps <clears throat> the highest cinema score horror movie of all time? Yes. <laughs> so weird. <Okay. laughs> it's a, it's a good, it's cute. Did we but... watch that? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, we watched it. Was there a Ferris wheel? I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember Jack Black. That was Goosebumps? Yeah, he's R.L. Stein in that. Oh, is there a new series that's out? There's either a new series or a sequel. There's something with Justin Long, right? Uh, I made a Justin Long reference in the Barbarian Kill Count to Goosebumps. Okay. Because Zorn wrote it in. Yeah. I think it must be a new series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Jack White. Okay. Oh, yeah. 2015's Goosebumps A. So you have guessed four out of the nine. Okay. Okay. It was, and that's before Get Out as well. That's Yes. So you have in, in a that row. That was before Get Out? Goosebumps? Goosebumps 2015, Conjuring 2 2016, Get Out 2017. Yep. Almost 10 years ago now. So have I, I forget, have I guessed any of the two that come after you have not. Get out. One of them is a sequel. One of them is a sequel. And the other. Is it a Purge sequel? It's not. Okay. And the other. The other came out this year. It came out this year. Okay. Was it Megan? It was not Megan. Um, Came out this year. Did we see it? We have seen it. Did we like it? We thought it was fine. <laughs> But remember, this isn't about us. This is about the audience. I know, but it's helping me narrow down. I know, I know. But this is about the audience. I know. For This is about the audience for these movies. And how well it spoke to the audience. Five Nights at Freddy's? Five Nights at Freddy's got an A-, baby. Wow, okay. Five Nights <laughs> at Freddy's, okay. The most recent horror film. Okay, so the only one I'm missing post Get Out is a sequel. Yes. Is this, is this sequel from... The 2010s, you said. No, no. Oh, it's from the 2020s. Mm-hmm. Did we see? Did we see it? We did. Um, we saw it in that nebulous kind of post-COVID, but we're still wearing masks. Oh, was it a Halloween movie? No. Hmm. So we saw it in theaters, mm-hmm. but you remember seeing it wearing masks. Mm-hmm. The one movie I can remember wearing masks to go see is Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah, it's not Mortal Kombat. <laughs> we saw this after that because that was our first yeah. movie back in theaters. Um, I mean, another hint. Um, It's a sequel. Yeah. Again, it did well at the box office, as did its predecessor. And I believe it was PG-13. Oh. Is this a slasher? No. Is this a supernatural movie? No. It's not supernatural, but maybe you could th- say it's paranormal, depending. Did we do we like it? This one we thought was fine. I bet you liked Five Nights more than this, though. Oh, it's it's like honestly, it's one of the most like. Is it forgettable? It's just very. It's fine. Have to, like that makes it harder to it guess. Does. I I'm think. Sorry, there there aren't strong is it a, feelings attached is it a, to it. Is it a female main character? I think I'd say yes. Is it characters that are the same from the first one? Yes. Was there a was there a demand for this? Uh, I don't. I I think we all would have been fine without this sequel <laughs> okay. being made, but it did well at the box office, and more are coming. More okay. A new character introduced in it, who wasn't in the first one, was also in a huge movie this year. The actor was. The actor who played this character? Yes. What the fuck? Is this character like a scrappy dude? Did everyone hate it? What was that last part? Was this character like a scrappy dude character and did everyone hate it? 
this character. Oh, Scrappy Dude. No. I thought you said Scrappy Dude, and I was like, kind of. Oh, so it's a guy? <laughs> yes. Okay. Was, is the character like the the villain? No. It's it's one of the main... He, he hangs. He's also in... And the actor is also in a huge movie this year. A huge movie this year. Huge movie this year. Megan? No, no, way bigger than Megan. Five Nights at Freddy's? No, way bigger. Not horror. Oh, not horror. Not horror. Oh, 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 oh. Huge oh. movie this year. What were huge movies this year? Oppenheimer? Not Jack Quaid. Because I was thinking Scream, but it's not that. It's not Scream. I know. <laughs> but he's an Oppenheimer. But James, there are so many guys in Oppenheimer. That doesn't help. <laughs> I mean... There's like a gajillion guys in that. Narrow it down. Okay. We've got... I don't know why Josh Peck is the first person I'm thinking what? of. Cast of Oppenheimer. Not Killian Murphy. Yes. Really? Yes. Killian Murphy was in a random ass... Oh, A Quiet Place Part 2. Yeah, A Quiet Place Part 2 You're got an A- from, oh from 2021. Oh my God, I forgot he was in that. Isn't it the most... The eh, most movie. It's a movie. It's fine. It's certainly. It's kind of the same thing as the first one, but sure. It certainly is a movie. It is. So you've um, got the most recent okay. five films: Goosebumps, 2015; oh Conjuring okay. 2, 2016; okay. Get Out, 2017; A Quiet Place Part 2, 2021; and fucking Five Nights at Freddy's, 2023, starring Josh Hutcherson as Mike Schmidt, who lost his brother. <laughs> So I have how many more to guess? You have three more to guess. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. Two 90s and another 2010. Two 90s. Are the 90s movies sequels? Did I guess the sequels already? There is one more sequel. It is in in the 90s. It is the like, how did this one land on this? But I love this movie and I'm happy for it. Urban Legend 2? No. <laughs> that was actually 2000. I still know what you did last summer. That was 98, but no. Mm. Uh, I would not be happy for that. Regardless of the Jeffrey Combs. He said there's no screams. No screams. A 90s movie. What is the sequel? Was the original movie a 90s movie? No. Uh-huh. Okay. Ah. 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 What decade is ah. the original movie from? In the 80s. Is it Poltergeist 2? It's not Poltergeist 2. I forget when that second one yeah, me too. came out. Candyman 2? <laughs> no. There's no way. I don't, did that even go to theaters? <sighs> I don't know if that one did. I know the third one didn't. Might need another hint. Okay. This property and franchise still going strong. Hellraiser? No. I mean, that's No, still strong. going strong. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> still and going it. strong. Like, we would be like, we got to go see this? Uh... Yes. If, if, if a movie of this was in theaters, absolutely, we would go see it. But that hasn't happened in a little bit, which I think just gave it away. It's not a Friday movie, is it? It's That'd no, be no, ridiculous. No. That'd be crazy. And it's not Saw. Because that's not 90s. So we'd be like, we got it. We got to go see this in theaters. We would definitely want to support it. Support it. Is this a movie that would be made, that was made for the girls and the gays? Because <laughs> that tells me a lot, I think. Uh, I'll say, yeah, it's, it's for the gays. Yeah? Not this movie, but this hypothetical new movie. Would be for the gays? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so is there is there like gay undertones? Not in this movie. You you're you're answering so confidently about a future movie that doesn't exist. But I guarantee it that if it were to happen, yeah. Reanimator? No. <laughs> it's still going strong. Oh, that's right. And still the going. kids love it. And the kids love it. This you keep saying there's no screams, though. There's no screams. That's all I can think of is like the kids and the gays love scream. And that's not still going strong. <laughs> uh, it's not Saw. It's not Friday. It can't be Nightmare. It can't be Halloween. Oh, you are circling it, hon. You're getting close. Oh, uh, Child's Play 2. Child's Play wow, 2 from 1990 the... with an A Dude, minus. Yeah, you're right. If if there was a new movie, yeah. cancel all my appointments. <laughs> That's right. We're getting a dressed up. We're, movie. we're wearing formal wear to go see the new <laughs> Child's Play movie. Hell yeah. Holy shit. Don't know how it got an A minus, but it deserves it. It's maybe. And the best you're Child's right. Play. Yes, the future, the that movie. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. You are down. I'm glad I asked that specific question for that movie. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. Because that genuinely helped. Okay. You are down to two movies. Yes. One from the 90s, the other from the 2010s. These films, they are uh, more likely than most of these other films to be seen by people who don't love horror. Okay. One. I guess to this, all the sequels already, right? Yes. Okay. One, highly respectable. The other, highly successful. Uh, they're probably both highly successful. The, is the one that's, res- is it The Sixth Sense? I already. No. I already asked that. But, but kind of in that vein. Is that the 90s one? Yeah. The and, others? No. And this one might want a little, just broaden a, just the tiniest bit horror. Just broaden it a little. Is it, what is, horror. is it a Tim Burton? No. It's, it's like, some people would be like, that's not horror, that's thriller. And we'd be like, no, it's uh, ours. Give it to us. Oh. Is this one of the movies where I'd be like, fuck yeah, let's watch this? I think that this is the most likely one that you would Ooh. be like, let's watch it. Have we covered it on the podcast? No. Is this a movie that you could describe as dude's rock? <laughs> I, I, no, I wouldn't say that. In uh. fact, I, I would maybe more say ladies rock. Oh, or Lady Rocks. Lady Rocks, and it's like a thriller. Uh huh. It's not like Blue Steel, is it? No, nah. highly respected. Oh, Alien. No, it it has not been kill counted, somewhat controversially, and has not been covered on the podcast. Does it have sequels? Yes. Like too many. Yeah. Um. Hmm. And. Some might argue it is not the first in the franchise, but it is not really a sequel. What? (laughs) Wait, so this, what? There's another movie that could technically be considered the the predecessor to this film, but most people consider this the first. Most people would probably consider this a standalone, but it definitely has sequels. But yes, there's a movie before it. With that same character? With that specific wording, yes. (laughs) huh <laughs> so okay so the, that character the main character in this is in this other movie doing a, stuff a main a prominent character a, a lady no oh this character is go ahead was a contender in the 2023 horror royal rumble that hasn't happened yet it oh has. wait! Yeah, this year. Yeah. This year. Oh, I see what you the, mean. The first ever, yeah. That. That what? Oh, hold on. The character that's like a weird, repeat character. Yeah. Was in our Royal Rumble. Yes. This is the a '90s one. Mm-hmm. It's a guy. Mm-hmm. There's too many. There's for thirty fucking characters. I can't remember. <laughs> oh man, what? Not just actual Stephen King. <laughs> I know. And not. <laughs> Not Wishmaster. I would love for Wishmaster to have an A. Dude. <laughs> I don't even know if that got a theatrical release. Uh, oh, wow. Um, um, dude, what the fuck? What movies? What weird cinematic universe are you describing to me right now? It's kind of a weird cinematic universe. It's even got a TV show, huh? It's even got a TV <laughs> show? Have I watched it? Couple episodes. Really? But we're bad at watching TV. And you said I would be like, yes, let's watch this movie. I think it's the most likely on this list that you would be like, yeah, let's Do watch I it. own any clothing with this movie or thing on? I it? don't think so. Would it be weird to find? Nah, I'm would sure Super find Yaki it. sell stuff with this on yeah, it? Maybe. Yeah. It yes. won awards. It won awards. Yeah. Why is the only thing I can think of like Panic Room? <laughs> There's a connection. Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah it all I comes do own together. a. I have a Buffalo Bill. Oh, uh, well, I was thinking tanned Hannibal. leather shirt. Sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. That yeah. I, 1991. Yes. Silence of the Lambs. A minus. Dude. Yeah. Chicks rock. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, and you're right. Hannibal would have been... Manhunter. Yes. With Brian Cox. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 
All right. So I have one left. You have one left. And it's from the... The 2010s. The 2010s. Not a sequel. It's not a sequel, but here's a giant hint. It's very strongly related to one you've already guessed. Wait, but it's not a sequel? It's not a... a Is it a reboot? Nope. Hannibal doesn't show up in this one again randomly, does he? He he? doesn't, no. (laughs) Um, Yeah, Red Dragon, A+. (laughs) Uh, Is it another Jordan Peele? Nope. Even more strongly related to one that you've already guessed. Um, The Conjuring? The Conjuring. Okay. 2013's The Conjuring, A-. Nice. So the nine horror movies with A what range cinema What a weird cinema selection scores. of movies. 1987's The Lost Boys. 1990's Child's Play 2. <laughs> 1991's Silence of the Lambs. 2013's The Conjuring. 2015's Goosebumps, which is the only one with an A. Again, none of these have an A+. Uh, 2016's The Conjuring 2, 2017's Get Out, 2021's A Quiet Place Part 2, and of course, 2023's Five Nights at Freddy's. Wow. That was hard. Very hard. Uh, Yeah, so cinema score, obviously uh, weird when it comes to horror movies. There have only been 22 movies with an F cinema score. Like, ever in history. Ever. And a lot that of That would be fun to try and get. Or are most of them ones where you're like, I don't even know what movie this Yeah, is. I don't know what Bolero is, Eye of the Beholder, Dr. T and the Women. But <laughs> do you know some of these? I know, I know the, the VHS tape cover of Dr. T <laughs> from video store days. It was Richard Gere. Yeah, it is Richard uh, Gere. And it's a Robert Altman movie. Okay. Uh, but some uh, notable <laughs> horror films that got Fs. Are fear.com from 2002. Uh-huh. Uh, here's one that we liked 2005's Wolf Creek. Wow. F Cinema Score. An F. P- I have seen people surmise it had a Christmas release date. Well, yeah. You Why? Don't, you don't want to go see that on Christmas? Why would you release Wolf Creek during Christmas time? That's a rough movie. That's not a Christmas movie. Uh, 2006's The Wicker Man, yeah, starring Nicolas Cage. Yeah. F. Uh, oh, not That's a, a well-deserved F. <laughs> not a horror movie, but disaster movie. Yep, got an F. Yeah. Uh, the two, 2020 Grudge remake got an F. Mm. And then another movie that we saw in theaters. This will be the last thing I make you guess, and just a, just a couple of guesses. We saw it in theaters right at the start of Dead Meat. And we weren't sure how we felt about it, but then maybe we kind of liked it. But it got an F, baby. Ooh. Saw it in theaters. Is it a Purge movie? No. It's not a sequel? It's not a sequel. It's a weird fucking movie with a uh, a, uh, a America's sweetheart in the lead role. And so anyone who maybe saw it because of her was in for a rude awakening. Because this fucking movie was weird. And we, you actually hated it as we left the theater. And then on our way home. Oh, a uh, mother. Mother, exclamation wow. point. Mother has an F, F cinema score. Wow. <laughs> By Darren Aronofsky. I guess people, the wrong people went and saw it, I, I guess. I guess, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Hope you had a fun time. I did, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It is hard. It's hard. Like, if, if we were just hanging out playing this. Mm-hmm. No way would I have taken as long on some of those. It's, it's hard. It's tough when you know the cameras are on. And I'm also, it's not even just the cameras are on. I'm also so aware that someone else is editing this <laughs> and how annoyed they're going to be at me going, oh, 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 and that makes it worse. Um, Great. We did it. We did it. I hope, yeah, it was. Uh, that was fun though. It was fun. Yeah. Cinema score, just a fun thing to follow. Box office, very fun to follow. It's, it's fun learning what, constitutes a success yeah and what doesn't uh you know you get weird things like elemental had a poor opening but it laid out to a success uh enough people liked it and it, it did pretty well it's it's fun to see movies get extended releases in theaters because of their success i'm hoping godzilla gets even mm. more time added so we, we can go see, go see it, it. Mm-hmm. yeah because I'm, I'm really looking forward to that uh by the time this comes out though it'll probably be out of theaters but yeah, fun stuff. So um, if you like box office stuff, hit me up because I'm always looking out for people to nerd out with it. Cool. About. So uh, social media? 
Yeah, Dead Meat James on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, DeadMeatStore.com. Yes, thank you to Gressel for sitting with us as we record these back-to-back episodes that still are shorter in length than the Horror Survivor episode. Yeah. So, at least there's that. (laughs) Go watch that if you haven't yet. Yes, please do. It's a good one. Yeah. It, it's maybe my favorite horse survivor yeah. season. It's, it's definitely better than season three. Season three was weird. Season three was weird. Yeah. But this one was good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, until uh, next year. <gasps> uh, hopefully a better one. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Good riddance to 2023. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Yeah.